Hello, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. Today's lesson is on computers and health, and I am Antoinette Gray. And I am Tanisha Pusey. Today we'll be focusing on computers and health, and we will be looking at three main objectives discussing health and safety factors associated with computer use, demonstrating the correct posture at the computer, and describing ways of caring for computers in the working environment. Now, computers are a hugely important part of human work. Today, uh, most of us interact with computers on a daily basis. Um, especially now with COVID-19, many of us are working from home and so we are interacting with the computer on a daily basis. Now, after continuous use over time, workers may suffer from a range of related health problems known as computer work-related disorders. There are three main areas and these are RSI, computer vision syndrome, and lower back pain. And we'll be discussing each of those in turn. Now we are looking at the repetitive strain injury, which is RSI. And the RSI occurs when the muscle or tendon experience some form of stress or strain. Now there are two types of repetitive strain injury, tendonitis and corporal tunnel syndrome, also known as CTS. Tendonitis is where a tendon is inflamed, caused by some repeated motion or stress on the tendon. Now a tendon is where a tissue, a tissue is attached to the muscle and the muscle attaches to the bone. Now there are times when we have excess overuse of the wrist when we are using the computer because of the type of job that we are doing. Now, when you have tendonitis, it can be very, very painful. There are times now when you will need to have to take some rest and you may also have to get it looked after by health professional, depending on how severe. severe the injury is. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, carpal tunnel syndrome is an inflammation of the nerve that connects your forearm to the palm of your hand. And this type of injury develops in the wrist of persons who type on computer keyboards for very long periods of time. Now, if you look on the image displayed, when you have CTS, generally you're faced with some numbness in your fingers or the half part of your hand at the top and that is caused from the nerve being inflamed. Now, how can you help to reduce the incidence of RSI? Now, we might be thinking that only computer users suffer from RSI, but this is not so. Also, persons in the music industry um, they too suffer from RSI. Um, so what we can do, we can take frequent breaks during long computer session to exercise your hands and your arms. Place a wrist rest between the keyboard and the edge of your desk to prevent injury during typing. And also you can place the mouse at least six inches from the edge of the desk to prevent injury while using the mouse. In this position, your wrist is flat on the desk, which causes bending to occur at the elbow rather than at the wrist area. And you can look at the image displayed on screen. Type on the keyboard as you would play the piano, lifting your fingers up and down rather than your wrist. And position the mouse at the same height as your keyboard. When you slide the mouse on the desk, move your entire arm and not just your wrist. And these are some of the things that you can do to reduce RSI. Computer vision syndrome is our next 
health issue that we'll be looking at and computer vision syndrome results from bright glare from computer screen when you're using it over time. Some of the symptoms might, that might be displayed um, are itchy eyes, the dryness of your eyes, blurred vision, dual vision, and sometimes you might also get headaches. Methods of preventing or reducing CVS. Take a break of five to 10 minutes when you are using the computer for one hour or more. This is very, very important if you want to maintain a healthy standing. Reduce glare reflections from the computer screen and you can also clean your screen and block out excessive sunlight and reflections from lamp. Adjust the contrast and brightness of the computer screen so that there is a high contrast between text on the screen and the screen background. And lastly, what we can also do to prevent eye strain is um, ensure that your eyes are a certain distance from your screen. Find a comfortable level between your eyes and the screen and the recommended distance is between 18 to 28 inches. Notice the image shown on the right of your screen where the image shows that the user is at least 18 to 28 inches from the screen of the computer. Another symptom that you may experience from using the computer over a long period of time is lower back pain. Now, lower back pain results from improper posture and incorrect furniture and equipment. If you look at the image to the right, you will notice that the worker is facing forward to the computer, yes, but he's leaning away from the chair. So his posture is improper and you will also notice that his neck is straining because he has to be leaning forward his elbows are not at his side and his feet are on the chair instead of flat on the ground so we can there are some things that we can do to also reduce the incidence of lower back pain, right? We can use a firm adjustable chair and it should also be comfortable. And you can adjust your chair height so that your thighs are horizontal, your feet flat on the floor and the backs of your knees are slightly higher than the seat of your chair. The back of your chair should support your lower back. Now again, notice the image on the right of the screen, how this computer user is seated. Notice that he is, his, his lower back is right against the chair. His feet, as opposed to the image you saw earlier, are flat on the floor. Notice the positioning of his arm and notice the distance of the eyes from the computer screen. Methods of preventing or reducing lower back pain. Stretch your lower back now and then by standing and pulling each knee to your chest, holding the position for a few second. seconds. Now, if you can't stand and hold the knee to your chest, you can still stretch up in the air. You can do light stretches so that you are able to, to, to feel better when you sit at the computer. Relax your shoulders. When you are keyboarding, your upper arm and forearm should form a right angle with your wrist and your hand in a straight line. Take a five minutes to 10 minutes break every hour. And if you notice each of these that we have done, it's suggesting to you that you take breaks every hour in order to prevent developing any of these um, health issues, so for RSI and CVS, we are asking that you take breaks every hour to help with these problems. And finally, the last thing that we can do is to use ergonomically designed 
furniture. Now we have a quick recap for you and it is in the form of a crossword puzzle. When we are studying, um, we don't have to be constantly reading. There are little fun things that we can do to ensure that the studying does not become so monotonous. All right, so we are going across and down and number one across asks, long concentrated hours of work, keying or moving the mouse involves dash of movements. What of movements? Antoinette, can you answer that question? You think our students can? I think they can. Repetition. Very good. <laughs> Repetition and of movements. Three across. The clue asks us a symptom of CTS. What is a symptom of carpal tunnel syndrome? Numbness. Numbness. Excellent. I hope our students are paying as keen attention as Miss Gray. Um, number four, going across, dash describes the way you sit at the computer. What describes the way you sit at the computer? Well, we just learned it. We talk about the posture. We talk about the posture. Very good. So we should ensure that our posture at the computer is very good so that it reduces the incidence of lower back pain and other computer health related issues. Five across. A problem brought on by looking at the computer screen for long periods of time. What are we talking about there? CVS. Co computer, computer vision, vision syndrome. syndrome. Excellent. Hmm. And we're advised to take dash at least once every hour when using the computer. And they are telling us that the response here should be two words. What two words are we talking about? Short breaks. We should take short <laughs> breaks. Excellent. And seven going across, dash can be used to prevent injury due to typing. And again, the clue says two words and it has nine letters. Wrist rest. Very good. Um, two going down, caused by repeated motion or stress on that tendon. What did we say that was? Tendonitis. Tendonitis. Excellent. And three, three going down. five going down, the last one, caused by inflammation of the nerve that connects your forearm to the pain. That's CTS. That's CTS. Very good. And if you were unable to follow at home, we have the results showing for you on screen and you can Remember them, hopefully, and look at that. We're moving right into ergonomics. Now, ergonomics is a science that designs job and equipment in the workplace to fit the workers, reducing fatigue, discomfort, and injury. Now, in an ergonomically designed workplace, you should think of the layout, the size of the office, the seating, lighting and ventilation. When we talk about the layout of the office, we're talking about the furniture and equipment and other supplies that will be in the office along with the workers. The size of the organization will be determined by the, the number of persons, the type of job that you will be doing, and also the furniture and equipment that will be, will, will be in the office. The seating arrangement, we also have to remember that ergonomically designed seats should be, should be had so that you can be comfortable while you are in the job, while you are doing your job so that you can be productive. The lighting is also very important. So you ought to design the office so that you are getting sufficient light, whether it's from natural sunlight or it's from artificial lighting the design of the office is that important where lighting is concerned and also ventilation to ensure that all persons within this space is getting enough oxygen and that the workspace is comfortable for you to get the job done. Now we talk about furniture and equipment. If you want the job to be done 
um, good and efficient, you ought to ensure that the office furniture and equipment that the staff is using to ensure that these are sufficient and good enough to get the job done. Now, when we talk about an ergonomically designed workstation, focus are on four key areas of the worker and the station. We're talking about the eye to source. Now, when you're designing your ergonomical workstation, the focus should be on the distance of the user to the eye source. So we are talking about the monitor. Notice number one on screen. Also, we are talking about the positioning of the hands, the hands to input device that will be used. In this case, we are talking about your keyboard and your mouse. The body to the chair, how the worker is sitting and where the lower back is, the height of the chair and all of that to the desk height. And finally, number four, we're looking at feet to floor. And notice that the user, the worker should have some space between the knee level and the top of the desk area. Now we're looking at another graphic which shows a worker using the computer. If you notice, she has an ergonomically designed chair, but she is not using it as um, properly. She's leaning forward to get closer to the monitor, the monitor, and you can see that she's too low because the chair is, needs to be adjusted. The desk is also out of position and her body posture within itself is incorrect. Look at her feet. They are uncomfortable because she is not positioned properly in the chair. Now we are looking at a correct posture of a worker using the computer. If you notice her shoulders, relaxed shoulders and arm at the side, fingers pointing forward and eyes facing the monitor 18 to 28 inches away. Eyes facing the screen at, the, at eye level so that she's able to see you without um, any discomfort. Feet is flat on the floor and her back has the support of the chair with clearance below so that her knees or the leg is not uncomfortable touching anything below the desk. Some of the office equipment that we should pay attention to in the office space are the chairs, the desk, the keyboards, the mouse, monitor, and the workstation themselves. So when employers are outfitting their office space, then they need to pay attention to these equipment that the employee will be using. Now we are looking at the ergonomic keyboard as a part of the accessory to the computer. The ergonomic keyboard is designed for comfort we have many different styles of keyboards, including Braille, QWERTY, Dovrock, and Retail. But the ergonomic keyboard is much more comfortable and easy to use. So where, what we suggest is that persons look at the different types of keyboards, and then now you will make a choice as to which one is much more beneficial for you in the office. Employers may be wondering, how can designing your office ergonomically, what can it do for you and your organization? Now, first of all, it can improve your employees' performance on the job. It can also create thriving work environment. It can reinforce 
a positive brand image. When your employees think that you have their best interests at heart, when you have their health, when you're concerned about their health and all of that, it will impact them positively. It can also increase employee engagement on the job, reduce some cost in the long run, and ultimately it will maximize productivity from your workers. Health and safety tips. Read the manual to ensure correct setup before you actually set up your computer you to read the manual. Use a properly designed computer desk. Use a comfortable chair with adjustable height, lower back support, and adjustable armrest. Position your monitor at approximately an arm's length away from your body position so that there is no glare on the screen. Take frequent breaks away from the computer. Do not expose your computer to direct sunlight, external heat, or moisture. Use a surge protector or UPS to plug your computer and never overload electrical outlets. Now, just a review question to see how much you have been paying attention. How does an ergonomic keyboard differ from a regular keyboard? And we have four options. A, you wear it like a glove and tie it by moving your fingers without touching anything or b it allows you to type with one hand c it is a v-shaped layout or splits the keyboard into two sides to create more natural angle for typing and d it has larger keys so it is easier to type now let us see if you have been paying attention what is our answer there our answer should be C, right? And number two, in the office, which of these furniture are not ergonomically designed? A, chairs, B, cupboards, C, desk, or D, keyboard. Now, if you have been paying attention, you will be able to see that the correct response there would be B, because the question says which are not ergonomically designed. Now we are looking again at the graphic that we have on screen. And the question says list three conditions shown in the figure that may cause injury to the worker. Right? So the first one would be they are not positioned properly on the chair, so they are not sitting properly. The chair does not support the lower back and the desk is not ergonomically designed, so it cannot be adjusted and the mouse is too far away from the reach of the user. All right, so those are some of the things that we need to take into consideration when we are designing or when we are using our furniture. Now, we would have invested in our computers and the equipment that we're using in the office, but we need to ensure that we are maintaining them and they're in proper working order. So computers are long-term investment made by companies, and this investment needs to be protected if they are to function effectively for an extended period. Hence, computers need to remain healthy and in good working order. And how can we do this? We can do this by keeping it physically clean, protecting it from malware, and by backing up all our important files. Some general care of the computer. You are to dust the computer monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Clean the table surface and work in environment frequently. Cover the computer when not in use. Do not eat or drink near the computer because you don't want any spillage to happen and it happen on the computer itself. 
store computers in a cool environment away from direct sunlight. Very, very important. Also, we need to install antivirus software, place computers away from walkways, drawers, or doors, ensure the computer is placed on a sturdy desk, turn off and unplug computers when they're not in use, and ensure adequate supply of power is available. And you should always ensure that you use a surge protector. So those are some of the rules that are associated with the computer. You need to ensure that you follow them so that you have a better time using your computer and they remain functional for a longer period of time. Now we are looking at office hazards. A hazard is an agent that can harm or damage a human property or environment. There are many types of hazard in the office environment. And these include incorrect workstation, poor lighting, poor layout of office furniture and equipment, and electrical hazards as well. So we are going to be looking at some of these. All right, so in order to prevent injury or illness in the office, we need to ensure that we stabilize the furniture that we have in the office to prevent them from falling over. And in looking at that, we need to also ensure that we do not overload our bookshelves and we should practice to store heavy items at the lower levels of our bookshelves. Now, sometimes we place the bulkier books or the heavier books on the top shelves. We should not do that. We should place them on the lower shelves because in the event that it topples over or there's an incident, then the lighter books will be on top and not the heavier ones that can cause injury. Um, do not stack files or equipment on top of high cupboards or cabinets. And you should regularly maintain all equipment to the manufacturer's specification. Provide fans and heaters to employees in an area if it is not air conditioned. Wear suitable clothing for the weather. Ensure employees are aware of emergency procedures for the area. And ensure employees receive appropriate training for the task that they should perform. Now we are looking at an office environment in which we can find many hazards. When you look at the graphic on screen, you will notice that yes, the workers are in the office, but they are doing a lot of things that they should not be doing at this time. So while you are at home, we are asking if you can point out some of the, the things that they should Hazard. not be doing there, the hazards that are seen on screen. And we are going to try and help you to point out some of them if you can see from what we have on the screen. So take out a sheet of paper and write down as many of them as you can, right? Because in a while, we'll be going through the listing and we want you to, to be able to tick off all of them to see if you would have identified the ones that we're identifying for you or along with you. All right? So we hope you were scrutinizing the picture carefully. And the first thing that we see is that too many files are on the desk. And we just said that you should not overload your desk with files, right? The cupboards are half open, notice that. So that means that somebody can bump into the open door and cause injury. Um, there's a handbag lying on the floor. Um, it is easy for somebody to be passing or walking along and the feet get hitched in the strap of the bag and they would then fall to the floor. Notice too that an electrical cord is running along the floor in the walkway and that is also easy for somebody to trip over.
You also notice that the fire exits are blocked, boxes are placed in front, and also there is a mop with a bucket in front of the door. Now these are fire hazards and they need not be there. Just in case of an emergency, the door should be accessible to the employees. A worker is carrying too many files and cannot see where she's going. So if you notice, she has a lot of files. The, the power cord is in the walkway, the bag is on the floor, and also there is a split in the carpet there with a can, so she can fall over and is injured. Now, water spill on the floor. Coffee is near the computer, which is a no-no. We just say no eating or drinking near the computer. And we have workers sitting on the chair incorrectly. Um, notice too that we have an overloaded socket and floors are placed on the system unit with water pouring out of it. Now we know that there should be no liquid around our electrical equipment, right? Papers are blowing through an open window and employees are standing on a desk attempting to change a light bulb. No, we should yeah. not do that at all. We should use step ladders in the work environment and we should try to have somebody with the technical know-how to do the changing instead of doing it ourselves. All right. So finally, before we leave you, we'll be giving you some exam tips, particularly for doing exams online. Now, before you set up to do your exams online, you should ensure that your computer is working. Check your computer before the start of the examination. You should read ex the instructions carefully before attempting each question. You should practice good time management. If you experience technical problem, take a screenshot of where you are in the examination online and notify your invigilator right away. Additionally, you should give yourself time to check and recheck your work before you hit that submit button. Make sure all questions are answered as you will not be given marks for questions that you leave undone. So that's all the time we have for today. We hope that you did grasp some of the points that we discussed here.